Good morning, friends and family. Welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Mass today. Today, February 23rd, we celebrate the memorial of St. Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr. The Lord granted him a stern struggle that he might know that wisdom is mightier than all else. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Coming together as God's family, we call to mind our sins and our failures, and we ask God that He grants us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of all creation, who were pleased to give the Bishop St. Polycarp a place in the company of the martyrs, grant through his intercession that sharing with him in the chalice of Christ, we may rise through the Holy Spirit to eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we shall go into such and such a town. Spend a year there doing business and make a profit. You have no idea what your life will be like tomorrow. You are a puff of smoke that appears briefly and then disappears. Instead, you should say, If the Lord wills it, we shall live to do this or that. But now you are boasting in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So for one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, it is a sin. The Word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Hear this, all you peoples, hearken, all who dwell in the, in the world, of lowly birth or high degree, rich and poor alike. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Why should I fear in evil days, when my wicked ensnarers ring me round? They trust in their wealth. The abundance of their riches is their boast. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yet in no way can a man redeem himself or pay his own ransom to God. Too high is the price to redeem one's life. He would never have enough to remain alive always and not see destruction. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. For he can see that wise men die, and likewise the senseless and the stupid pass away, leaving to others their wealth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who, there is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak, speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. 
In today's Gospel, John, one of Jesus' disciples, complained to Jesus against somebody driving out demons in his name because he was not a follower. Jesus responded by telling them not to stop the person because no one who performs a mighty deed in his name who can at the same time speak ill of him. So what does Jesus say here? He reveals the broadness of his company. That there are people who may not necessarily be near him or formally a member of his community, but still one with him. One with him in heart, in mind, and in will, and that can also count. Two kinds of people come to mind. The first are those who belong to the faith, those who were baptized, but they do not show up. Either they do not practice or perhaps they lack witnessing. They call themselves Catholics, but we don't see them very often in the church. Maybe they are one with Jesus in some ways, but are also very much preoccupied with others. They are absent, not part of the community, but not necessarily going against Jesus. The next kind are those who may not have heard of Jesus and the Christian faith but are unknowingly living Jesus' teachings. Karl Ranner names them as anonymous Christians. They live the teachings of Jesus even though they have not heard yet of Jesus. While it is good and advantageous to be baptized, listen to the word of God, receive the sacraments, and avail of everything the church provides, it is also possible by God's grace to live according to his will even in their absence, so that they may not be part of the community, but they are for him, for they are not against him. But here's a caveat, a little caveat. While they can be considered disciples too, the first kind and the second kind, we must always aspire to be in full communion with Jesus. The first kind, though, can be considered disciples must aspire to live in communion by living the faith because it isn't just enough to be baptized and to have received the sacraments and to be called Catholics by baptism. No, to be in full communion with Jesus means that we need to live the faith. But also the second kind, though called disciples as well, must aspire as well to live in full communion with the Lord within their resources and their abilities. They must aspire to discover the Lord, know His teachings, and avail of the sacraments, and discover Jesus more and more through scriptures so that full communion can be achieved. Hence, we must be, we must be the third kind. We must aspire to both belong to the faith by sacraments, and also live the faith through our witnessing. This is hard to achieve, but very, very possible. Belonging to the faith and receiving all the sacraments, they make us disposed to receiving all the sanctifying graces available. But sacramental life is not just about receiving the sacraments. There is a task involved. The sacraments must be lived. We, the faithful, must make use of the graces we have received, and then become witness to others. So we strive to be the third kind, the ideal kind, the kind who is in communion with Jesus, the kind who know Jesus, who receive Jesus in the sacraments, and at the same time, who live his teachings every day. Amen. As faith-filled followers of Christ, we today offer our prayers and petitions knowing that the God of compassion will hear us. That all the baptized may live their baptismal vows and live in harmony and peace and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that leaders of nations and peoples may come to understand and respect the value of faith and work diligently to ensure religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not know Christ yet, that they may be sent with people who would proclaim the truths of Jesus Christ to them and so that they would come to discover the beauty of being in intimate relationship with Him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be forever blessed in the peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord our prayers and intentions, the intentions of our loved ones and those whom we promise that we shall be including them in our prayers. O God, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, help us to live in unity and strive to bring peace to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love, through which St. Polycarp over overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. Their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on her sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray. Give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Polycarp faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless, keep, and protect you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.